Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast, coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We have a wonderful show for you today. We're so excited that you are part of our beautiful Reading with Your Kids family. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Stitcher Radio, on Spotify, or wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is a debut author celebrating her brand new book, Being Small Isn't So Bad After All. Our guest name is Lori Orlinski. Before Lori joins us, I want to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by the adventures of Johnny Pocket Band, Battle of the Band by Linda Phelps. Do you know a tween or a teen who struggles with stress and anxiety? If you answered yes, let me suggest a perfect fun summer read. The Adventures of Johnny Pocket Band by Linda Phelps. Johnny and his brother Drummer Boy are excited to compete in the Battle of the Bands. They have two months to get prepared, but everyone is way nervous. Johnny has promised himself that he will conquer his anxiety this year and start having fun. And you know, with the help of his friends, he just might make it. This story captures the emotions, fears, and excitement of the preteen years. It's a difficult time for all, but this story opens a window of understanding as each kid shares their thoughts about fitting in, making friends, and the new unsettling attraction to girls. This is a fantastic read for all families. The Adventures of Johnny Pocket Band Battle of the Bands is available on Amazon or on Linda's website, johnnypocket.net. The Adventures of Johnny Pocket Band, Battle of the Bands, by Linda Phelps. This episode of the podcast is also sponsored by Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck by Allison Paul Klakowitz. Every kid knows that mommies are the greatest. They feed us, they take care of us, they love us with all their hearts. But did you also know they're like so, so cool? Now, one little boy sure does. His mommy drives... A great big red monster truck, and it is awesome. It bounces and smashes and takes them on amazing adventures all over the country. And and her truck, they can do anything and go anywhere. And best of all, they do it together. Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck by Allison Paul Clackowitz. It really is a fun book that you and your kids are going to love. You just... You're just going to go on a magnificent journey with this book. Check it out today. It's available on Amazon. Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck by Allison Paul Klakowitz. Join us on the line right now from Chicago and Illinois. She is the author of a debut picture book. It's called Being Small Isn't So Bad After All, a, a book that I just love being vertically challenged myself. Please welcome to the show, Lori Orlinski. Lori, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's such an honor. I'm excited to have you on the show and excited for you to tell us all about what being small isn't so bad after all is all about. Great. Well, it is the origins of being small. Uh, you know, my I have a six-year-old daughter. One of my kids is six right now. Her name is Haley. And when she was three years old, she came home from preschool crying hysterically and said she was done going to school and she never wanted to go anymore. So it took a lot of bribery and prying. And I finally found out that they, the teachers had done a very innocent exercise. They hung a growth chart on the wall and they put a piece of masking tape next to each child's height indicator. And all of her friends were on the top and the middle. And she was like way down at the bottom as the shortest. And what she saw wasn't I'm just the shortest she saw her name at the bottom which to her meant that she was the worst mm. and you know we discussed it at length and then I figured let me just go on Amazon and find a book about it find a character that she can relate to and then read it to her and call it a day and I was completely shocked that there was nothing there was no book about this topic that existed and that's how being small was born I, I love that story of how this book came to be. I, I don't love the fact 
that Haley felt bad and that she had this bad experience where, 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 where she felt terrible and her, her feelings were hurt and she, she became so sad. But I love the way that you dealt with it as a parent. First, you listened to your child and you took your child's words and you took your child's feelings and emotions seriously. And that's so very, very important. And then you you looked for a book to read with your kids. And that's a great way to deal with these emotional issues through the pages of a book by talking about a character in a book that's dealing with some of the same things. And then when you couldn't find that resource, you went and you wrote it yourself. You created that book yourself. And one of the things I want to know is where did you get the idea, the strength to, to believe that you could actually write a children's picture book? Absolutely. I have a journalism and freelance background, and I've always wanted to write a book, but I've never had this, like, inspiration. And, you know, this experience and having this negative uh, day at Haley School became such a defining moment in my life because it, like, hit me over the head, like, oh, my God, this is what I'm supposed to do. And it really just started out as, let me kind of, like, write a poem for my daughter, and, you know, I can read it to her at night and make her feel better. And then it kind of turned into a book. And then my family encouraged me, you should kind of think about getting this published. And I did. And it's it, surprising that it all worked out. But it's, you know, not only made a difference in the life of Haley, but I'm seeing this book really change other kids' perspectives, both kids that are short mm-hmm. and even kids that are taller, because it gives them some kind of perspective on the power of their words. Mm-hmm. So it is getting a lot of praise for kind of becoming this anti-bullying book. Tell us a little bit about the message in the book and, and what you want to, to, what you convey to kids in being small isn't so bad after all. So the original message that I wanted to portray was that short kids can do special things too, just like tall kids. So, you know, short kids, for example, you're the last one to get wet when it rains. My mom used to tell me that all the time because I'm only 5'1", but you know, it never impacted me the way that it impacted Haley. Mm-hmm. And so, again, initially it was to make short kids feel better. And in writing this book, there's just so many universal undertones about celebrating our unique differences and kind of empowering a child. And there's also a great message in there about the bond between a mother and a child and how, you know, a parent really has this wonderful role to, you know, make a child feel better and to kind of shape the way that they see the world. I, lo- I love that. I love that. How, I, now, as you were creating this, this poem, what was Haley's reaction the first time you read it to her and then when she finally saw it in print? She is she's very honest. And so a lot of times I would, um, you know, start reading like a stanza and she would put her thumbs down or she would stick her tongue out and she's like, <laughs> I don't, that's a big word. And So she really helped me. She was my best editor in a sense because I realized that I couldn't use certain words. I had to really, you know, get it to that, you know, preschool to like grade school age level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she, she's got it memorized. Her and my other daughter memorized it. Um, But they, you know, gave me some really good tips. You know, I I probably had about 80% of the book developed and then she helped me with that other 20% by kind of telling me the problems that she faces as a kid. Mm -hmm. And she was able to articulate that, you know, even at three and a half, four years old. Yeah. That that was one of the things that that struck me when you were telling the story is just how aware kids are at at such a young age that is like, yeah, they're, they're, you know, the kids are just seeing these differences. It's unbelievable. You know, I started doing some research as I was writing the book, and I found out that 160,000 children stay home from school every single day just to avoid being bullied. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what's more, this bullying behavior can start as early as age three with girls being a little bit more susceptible to it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I didn't think Haley was being bullied, but I thought this was such a critical time in her social and emotional development that she could either – you know, kind of embrace it and and really embrace being small or she could just freeze and retreat. And I wanted her to embrace it. And and I really think that that is a a brilliant strategy, for lack of a better word, in in dealing with with Haley and and, and a great tool to give her as she's growing up. 
Uh, I've been doing educational magic shows that, that deal with the topic of bullying f- since 2003. And, you know, that's one of those statistics that really, you know, kind of caught my eye. And one of the things, too, I think you, you're experiencing it, too, with this book is that a lot of times what some kids are perceiving as bullying behavior is it, I mean, that's not the intention of, of the kids on the other end. You know, they're, they're not necessarily looking to bully someone to make them feel bad. They just don't realize the power of their words and how, you know, what, you know, that some words, you know, may not bother, you know, 90% of the kids in the class, but they may be very, very hurting to 10 or 5% of the class. Absolutely. And I think, too, you know, kids are so visual that when you, you know, you're kind of trained to associate the top with being the best. And so when your name falls at the bottom and you go into school and it's a visual that you see every single day, I think you kind of associate that with being the worst. So I I really started to understand and empathize where Haley was coming from. And, Mm -hmm. you know, her phone would call, and even our teachers very innocently would call her munchkin and peanut, and they would kind of like, rest their hand on her head, kind of like they were petting her. You know, it was really endearing, but she took it to, I am short, I am like a small puppy, I'm the worst, I have these horrible nicknames. And so, you know, she was really sensitive to it. Mm-hmm. And and one of, the, one of the interesting things, too, is I, 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 I joked earlier about being short of stature myself, but I, I am, and um, and, and it took me a while to kind of, embrace it you know but even though I've, I've have come to terms terms with it and i'm a lot older than three years old uh there are days <laughs> there are days when it's um kind of annoying especially when it's pointed out to me one interesting thing about this book is you know i will talk to parents who will say their kids are tall and they'll tell me about the struggles that their kids have you know for example with tall kids um there's the expectation that the kids have to be smarter at a younger age because they look older. Mm -hmm. And it's just so interesting. It kind of like unearths all these stigmas and all the ways that people are feeling. It's not just short kids that sometimes get, you know, for uh, pun intended, the short end of the sick. I mean, Mm -hmm. there are so many children that have, you know, different differences, whether they're, you know, inner um, emotional or they're physical and, Every one of those children is special in their own way and should be kind of celebrated and should have that self-confidence. And if we can give them that foundation at an early age, I think that we really can get ahead of the bullying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you do point out, you know, there are every kid does have their their abilities and their challenges. I, you, You know, you were mentioning how tall kids, they appear older, so they have to you know, there's pressure on them to, to uh, appear smarter. There's also pressure on them to be more athletic. People think that they're, oh, you're tall. You must be a great athlete or whatever. And, uh, yeah, I think that's so important for us to to teach our kids and also to remind ourselves as adults that we need to look at children and come to understand who they are and what their, what their abilities and challenges are and um, – not to make prejudgments about what they should be. Absolutely. I, I agree 100% with that. And, you know, every time Haley would get measured at the doctor, I mean, I am not a fan of that, you know, like your child is in this percentage height because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. As long as your kid is healthy and happy, for me, that was the ultimate. And so I never even thought about, you know, telling Haley, oh, you're in the the fourth percent for height or you're in the zero percent for height it just you know I I didn't intentionally not tell her but then you know even more so when this issue came about I made sure to say to you know our pediatrician you know this is a conversation that maybe you should have when the children aren't around because here's how my daughter reacted Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what was your pediatrician's response when you shared that you know he understood um you know at that age most kids don't take things so much to heart Mm -hmm. my daughter was really really sensitive and I think as I mentioned it had to do with that visual reminder every day whereas you know you go to the doctor once every couple months when you're younger and you get labeled as you're in this percentage but you know he definitely appreciated the feedback and and understood where I was coming from Mm -hmm. what specific message did you share with Haley that kind of helped her understand that being short is it's not so bad after all 
you know, I showed her, I think, you know, I would tell her these positive things that she could do. Um, you know, when we go on a plane, you know, we're, we're going to Disney World, look at all the room that you have. And everyone else is like, daddy is tall, daddy is so squished in. You and I have so much room for our feet. And I think telling her things like that is different than actually seeing it in the book. You know, she got to see the illustrations of, you know, a tall, a tall kid not fitting in a little tree house, yet a short kid kind of fitting there with ease. Mm -hmm. And we also talked about, you know, the benefits that all kids have, you know, whether it's any kind of differences that they had. We talked about the fact that everyone has positives and negatives, but it's really about who you are on the inside and how you treat other people. And I think, you know, that message really resonated with her. And now, I mean, she is the shortest one probably in all of kindergarten in her in, in her school by a landslide and she rocks it. She totally embraces it. And I, I think it's because of the book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. I, 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 I know there is so many uh, w wonderful kids in my life that I've met over the years who are the shortest in their class, but they have this fire and courage inside them. That's really incredible. And it, that's kind of what I'm hearing about Haley. Yeah, that's exactly, you know, she has this, like, newfound confidence, like, I can take over the world because I now see the things that I can do that, you know, other people might have looked at as a hindrance, but really, it's it, it makes her excel. Mm -hmm. Now, you were saying er earlier on about, about kids who are taller kind of coming to understand um... – about, about their words and, and not using words that, that, that are hurtful to others. Talk a little bit more about, about that and, and those kids' reactions. Yeah, I've had a lot of reactions from parents and kids, you know, saying kind of what I mentioned to you about, oh, my you know, son always calls Haley Munchkin. We didn't think it was that big of a deal. And so it gives them more of the understanding that, hey, you know, what you may think is such a nice, endearing pet name it, it could, your words, you know, have power over others, and let's not do that, and let's make sure we address, you know, her by name or ask her if it's okay if you call her that. And, you know, I think that kids are understanding, you know, on the playground, you know, shorter kids may have, you know, different abilities than they do, and I think it's just, you know, I, I go to readings all the time. I read to preschools and elementary schools, and so many times older, you know, I'm sorry, taller kids will raise their hands and they'll say, I didn't realize that this hurts my friend's feelings. Next time I'm going to do this mm -hmm. instead. And I think, you know, again, that wasn't the original message. I wanted this to be for just for short kids. And it just has these universal undertones that I think apply to so many kids in so many situations. Now that you've getting such great response to the readings and, and, and folks who are reading being small isn't so bad after all and, and, and the reactions are so positive, uh, do you have plans to write a follow-up or, or to turn this into a series? I'm thinking about it. Um, I do have another book in the works that will be released in the fall, but it's a completely different topic. Mm -hmm. um, it's more, uh, it's, it's less about a lesson and, and a more fun kind of, too fairy esque book, um, but the more people that I that read being small, and the more people that I tell them about it, they're like, "Can you do being tall? Can you do being shy? Can you do having red hair?" And so I think there is this opportunity to kind of turn this into a series that you know gives all different kids um, of all different you know uh, looks and abilities self confidence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, right off the top of my head, I think you could write a, uh, a being tall isn't so bad after all, because I, I know a lot of kids who are really, really tall who feel very self-conscious about it. Yeah, that, I, this, I love, it's great. I would love to talk to you when I start to do it. <laughs> well, how did, how did you enjoy the whole experience of being a writer in the editing process, I'm not so much the editing process where, where Haley was sticking out her tongue at you, but, you know, <laughs> the, the actually pulling it together and, and taking this idea and turning it into a published book. I mean, it was amazing. I still have, like, little post-it notes or, you know, I would sometimes be at gymnastics with Haley and I have another daughter, Ellie, who's also short. She's three years old and I'd be watching them in gymnastics, yet, like, I would think of something and I would write it on my arm or I would write on a post-it and I would have this, like, draft email composed to me and it wouldn't make sense to anybody, but it was a bunch of rhyming words. So I also spoke in rhymes for a very long time when I was writing the book. 
<laughs> but, you know, seeing this come together was just amazing. And, you know, I, I asked a couple of, you know, friends and family, can you read this? Can you tell me what your thoughts are? And I was really fortunate to have such a supportive network of people, you know, who were very honest with me Mm -hmm. and, you know, might say, you know, I really like this, but this doesn't make any sense. And, Mm -hmm. you know, things that I was really attached to in the book, I ended up taking out because they made sense in my head, but they didn't necessarily make sense to anybody else. Boy, I have that problem with a lot of things in life. There's a lot that makes sense in my head that no one else can understand at all. (laughs) (laughs) And I was really fortunate um, to be, you know, working with mascot books. I, they have been such a great partner to me, and um, with them, I found this amazing illustrator um, who lives in Brazil. Her name is Vanessa Alexandri, and she just captured every detail. And I even sent her a picture of Haley, and the character in the book looks so much like Haley. It's amazing. And I, I just, you know, it's like she was in my head. What was that like for Haley to, you know, know that this, the story was about her, but then to see this character on the page that looks so much like her? She thinks she's famous. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, you know, so hopefully we didn't give her too much of a complex, but she is obsessed with it. She has a book displaying on her uh, dresser. You know, she, it's in her school library, and so she always reads it during reading time, and you know, she wants to be an author. She um, is constantly, you know, stapling construction paper and coloring things. And, you know, not only was this such a positive experience in helping change her perspective of herself, but I think she saw me, you know, work at something and, you know, do it relentlessly and not give up. And I think it gave her that drive that mm-hmm. she one day will maybe write a book. And, you know, she saw a strong mom and I want her to be a strong a strong child. Absolutely. And we talk so much here in the show about how important it is for parents to read, not only with their kids, but let their kids see them reading to model that behavior. And you did the same with, with your daughter. There was this issue and you wanted to solve it and you worked really hard at it. And then you turned what was a negative experience into something really positive that's helping lots of people. Thank you. Thank you. And I, you know, especially wanted to do this book in rhyming. As a child, I always loved, you know, reading Dr. Seuss books with my dad. I thought, always thought rhyming was such a clever way to captivate a young child and to foster their love for reading. It's great for early readers. It also kind of teaches them about repetition and sounds. And so that's exactly also why my book is done in rhyme. Yeah. I imagine you must have gotten some strange looks, you know, walking around the streets of Chicago, going into different stores and ordering things and maybe just slipping into rhyme while you're ordering a coffee at a coffee shop or something like that. Oh, my gosh, yes. And my husband was also sick of it. Everything I said, we would rhyme. And it was was embarrassing. But, you know, you fall into that mode. And until you're done with the book, you keep rhyming and rhyming. I sometimes do it now. (laughs) Well, you can either say it in rhyme or or say it uh, (laughs) without rhyme. But tell us where folks can connect with you and learn more about the books on the net. Absolutely. Um, I have a Facebook page. It's facebook.com backslash being small. I'm also on Instagram. My handle is at being small book. Um, My book is available on amazon.com. Again, it's being small isn't so bad after all. And it's also available um, locally in Chicago at Barnes & Noble and Barbara's Bookstores. And if you're not local, um, you can order that on those websites. That is awesome. We've been talking today about a, a, a little book that's making a big impact on the world. Being small isn't so bad after all. We've been talking to the author, Lori Olinsky. Lori, thanks so much for being part of the show. Thank you so much for having me. And I really You know, I truly hope this book makes a difference in other kids' lives just the way it touched my own daughter. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be M. Sean Peterson. He will be here to tell us all about his great middle grade fantasy novel, Stella and the Timekeepers. You know, we are really all honored that we have a chance to give authors like Lori Olinsky and M. Sean Peterson a voice, a chance to tell the world about their fantastic children's books. If you are the author of a great children's book, we would love to give you that same opportunity. 
being a guest on the show. It's fun, it's easy, and it gives you the chance to tell thousands and thousands of people about your great children's book. All you need to do is you go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the contact button. Let my producer, Fatima, know all about your great book. We will let you know the next easy steps. The next easy step for me is to say thank you. We want to say thank you to Lori Olinsky. Be sure to check out her book, Being Small Isn't So Bad After All. I also want to thank our sponsors, Alice and Paul Clackworth. Be sure to check out her amazing book, Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck. And we also want to thank Linda Phelps and her book, The Adventures of Johnny's Pocket Band, Battle of the Bands. I also want to thank my amazing producer, Fatima Khan, for, for doing everything she does to help make the show a success. I also want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support that she gives me. I, I want to thank my, my amazing niece, Jimena, for all the joy that she brings into my life. And, of course, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for bringing joy into your children's lives. Thank you so much for bringing joy to my life by listening to the show. And thank you so much for making the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.